pretty good. I want to thank uh, my friend, Chairman Macaro. I want to congratulate you on your first conference as NCAI president. I look forward to your leadership and our continued collaboration with NCAI for years to come. It's really an honor to be here today with all of you because together we've accomplished a lot for Indian country and for Native people everywhere, and there is still more to come. It was three years ago this week that I became the chairman of the Senate Committee on Indian Affairs. And from the very beginning, it was important to me that everything that we did was rooted in respect and reciprocity. Doing this work right starts with listening. Because you can't understand the needs and the concerns of Native communities, be it American Indians or Alaska Natives or Native Hawaiians, without starting from a place of humility. And that's exactly what we tried to do. One of the first things that we did in my tenure as chairman was hold hearings on Native priorities and have NCAI, tribal leaders, and other organizations come in and tell us what they needed. And we listened. And the priorities that you all laid out became our roadmap for everything that we did in Congress, whether it's policy making or spending or oversight. Now, whenever Congress is crafting landmark pieces of legislation around climate, around infrastructure, around health care, around transportation, we make sure that there is a tribal title in each one. The Native communities have equities that are accounted for at every step, not hastily written uh, as an afterthought, because Native issues are American issues. And I'm proud of what we've delivered so far. We secured the largest investment in Native communities in the, in the history of the United States, totaling more than $73 billion. It was record funding to support a wide range of needs, including COVID-19 response and recovery efforts, Native health care and housing, water, san sanitation, infrastructure, transportation projects, education, energy development, economic development, and more. The committee also had its most productive years in decades, hoping to pass 18 bills into law. These bills covered everything from establishing Native American language resource centers to preventing exports of illegally held tribally, uh, tribal cultural patrimony and promoting repatriation. We reauthorized the Violence Against Women Act to restore tribal criminal jurisdiction and help Native communities to keep their women, children, and their families safe. And we also doubled funding for Native health care and secured advanced appropriations to make sure that Indian Health Service is protected from funding disruptions in the event of a government shutdown. The progress we've made so far is real and it is meaningful, but it is cold comfort for people who don't have their basic health care needs met or people whose water is polluted. And so our work remains undone. We're currently working through dozens of bills covering a wide range of issues facing Native communities. Indian boarding schools, public safety, Indian water rights settlements, land into trust, hunting and gathering treaty rights, housing, Native language, and federal recognition, just to name a few. We're also hard at work on reauthorizing the HASDA, ensuring Native communities, farmers, and producers are well represented in the Farm Bill, strengthening our oversight of NAGPRA and expediting repatriations, and responding to the fentanyl crisis. But none of this work is possible without tribal leaders, organizations like NCAI, and other advocates helping me, and our committee vice chair, Lisa Murkowski, and our staff, some of whom are with, with me here today, to get these priorities over the line. The committee's success is your success. So please stay engaged. Please keep raising your priorities with us. There's a saying I first heard from a former senator in the Senate, Barbara Mikulski, that stuck with me through my time as chair. Nothing about me without me. Nothing about me without me. There is no doing this work without Native voices at the table telling us what you need, leading us to do the work that we need. 
We're going to keep listening to you. I'll, I'll allow the applause. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I, and I really mean it. You know, when I became the chairman of the Indian Affairs Committee, I understood that I had to start learning about hundreds of sovereigns, hundreds of individual nations and cultures and communities with their own language, their own land base, their own economic development, uh, their own uh, history, their own culture. And I realized that I couldn't fit all of that information into this little brain. I really couldn't. And so the best way that we could chart a course as a committee, uh, which has responsibility and oversight and jurisdiction over matters that interact with Native people across the country, is to just listen and to let you lead. We do the work, but you lead us. Thank you so much.